Not on. There we go. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Wow, we're working it out today, and I'm so glad. Now, this is the welcome to streams of life. Those of you online, you are welcome anytime online as well as on location. Uh, please remember, during this entire service, number one, have a happy heart. Become a part of us. Number two, smash the like button. Subscribe. Whether you're on Facebook, we have two Facebook sites. It's uh, Living Stones as well as Sunland Tahunga. You can like the page, be a part of it on Facebook, but also we're on YouTube. And if you smash the like or subscribe button you'll, and you put the little, uh, the little ding-a-ling thing, the little bell, you'll get informed every single time we go live and anytime we have anything happening. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, welcome to Living Stones and Sunland Tonga. Is anyone here in the room? Yes. yes. Let's, let's hear a little louder there. See, see, there you go. We're not, you're not alone. We're together. And by the way, beyond that, there's someone else that's here. Who is that, Jeff? Who else is here? Jesus is here with us. You bet. And we have our angels here with us. And as always, as I start to pray and then I open my eyes, we will see many more people along with angels here as well. And uh, you have a wonderful service. We have something great planned for you. And Jesus is here with us today. So let's have some beautiful music today and start it off. God bless you all. Lord, I lift your name on high, so please feel free to join us and sing along. Stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He! Together we see. Darkness closes in love still. 
And I pray that God has given us life to be on the land of the living. Isn't that so? Amen. 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 He has kept us through the week. He gave us the sunshine. He gave us the rain. He gave us the fruits, the flowers. He gave us so many things. So we have to give God thanks and praise every day and for life and for traveling mercy. Mm-hmm. Isn't God wonderful? Yes. Yes. So at this time, I just want to say welcome to the house of the Lord. Those online, we want to welcome you. You must make it a duty to come here because in God's house, there is the fullness of joy. joy. And we are here to give God thanks and praise. When you're online or at home, you are missing out. You just watch what you are missing out, okay? So it's a privilege once again to welcome each one of us here this morning. It's a beautiful Sabbath day, and to God be the glory. In Psalms 121, it says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Isn't that great? We have not to depend on ourselves, but unto God for our strength. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we are indeed thankful for your goodness towards us. Thank you for bringing us here this morning. Thank you for all what you have done for us throughout this week. Thank you for traveling mercy. Thank you for the healing hands that touch us, even where we were aching, oh, Heavenly Father. I pray that, Lord, you continue to be those who are uh, the healing yeah, you are the great physician, and you can heal the sick and make them well again. Be with us, O Heavenly Father. I pray for Pastor John this morning as he delivered the word. Help the, the Holy Spirit to fill this place. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, church family. Happy Sabbath. It is such a privilege to be here with you this morning after such a beautiful welcome where we get to praise the Lord. And I am privileged enough to praise him this morning by singing, I Surrender All. And it is such an amazing thought to think upon the fact that we can surrender it all. And I invite you this morning 
as we enter our worship service this morning that we just surrender it all to Jesus. He can take care of it. He will take care of it. He will guard you and guide you and put you in his loving arms if you surrender it to him. So listen to the lyrics and please surrender it to Jesus this morning. go, Maria Noel. Thank you so much. It was great having you here, and it looks like we're going to have Micah and you up there soon also before the children's story. Um, and I want to thank the Lalin family. I saw Alex was on the piano or on the keyboard, and we have, we have Natalia and Sophia and Clarissa and Jacob, and I want to make sure I get the names right because I don't want to mess people's names up. But I'm so glad you guys are here. And... Um, this brings us now to the spotlight on outreach. Um, Susan, did you want to say something before the video, or would you like to let the video play first? Let's go ahead and, and watch. Uh, you ready back there? Let's go ahead and have a video. Turn up the sound also on it so you can hear what's going on. It's a beautiful video on God's Closet.
We have purple here. Susan, what, what was that all about? That is a... Is it's it, on. Is it on? We're on. Okay. Uh, that's a program that many of you are familiar because I stand up here often and talk about God's Closet. So uh, we have a uh, Sunland Tahunga Seventh-day Adventist Church a mile and something from here. Yeah, just, just about a mile. And uh, we are blessed to be able to use the basement of that church for this program of supplying children's clothing to the community. We have three events per year, and the events is a free shopping day for the community to come in and shop for children's clothes, and they are able to go out with bags of clothes, bag for each child uh, that have been donated to us. We've been very blessed in our program with the donations, and so God's really watching out for this program. Praise the Lord. Did you see any faces in there that you recognize in terms of our volunteers? <laughs> there, there were a few faces that are here among us today. And uh, we have our next event coming up when? Who knows? One week from tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. One week from tomorrow, we have our, our next event coming up. And this sheet of paper is pretty blank, right? This sheet of paper, I'd like to sign up some volunteers today. You can catch me in the lobby or uh, at Potluck, and uh, we would really appreciate uh, help from volunteers because we have a skeleton crew, and there's some tasks that, that we just can't get done during the event because we'd need more, need more help. So I would appreciate anybody who has, has a, a few hours next Sunday, week from tomorrow, uh, that can come and help us out. That would be wonderful. Uh, we are uh, very excited about this upcoming event, and we just had a meeting this week trying to get all of our ducks in a row, so we'll be ready, and it's, it's exciting. We're yeah. getting, getting ready, yeah. So yes, uh, now you know what God's closet is, right? I know my dad used to say, I didn't know God had a closet. <laughs> I'd say, yes, and there's no skeletons in it, yeah. but there are clothes, but they're lightly used or new clothes, right. not old clothes. Because mothers with children or fathers with children, they need to have clean clothing and good, you know, a full wardrobe. And so there are certain areas that maybe need some uh, donations. There are certain areas. The age groups usually are T2 and T3, especially girls, especially right? Especially for girls, right. And uh, we, we also, as a part of the program, you may have seen there were some other things being given out there besides clothes. Mm -hmm. We have uh, part of our program, the pastor prays with the folks as they come through the program, uh, through the shopping area, and then they will go to a different section where we supply uh, a free bag of diapers for uh, diaper-aged children. Last time we gave out something like 56 packages of diapers. Mm -hmm. uh, in our last event, we had uh, served 155 children in this program. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's very exciting. It's we, incredible. We, we get, we get a, a large volume of people who come in and at the beginning, the first people feel like if they don't get there right when it starts that they're gonna miss out on something. So we are putting out more, more clothing during the program so we can try and alleviate the crowds, but we really could use a little bit of crowd control help. Also, we have, you may have seen crayons, right? We have a table where we, which is right in the venue where the clothes are so the parents can see the kids. We have a table where the children can color. So we, we supply coloring books and, and crayons. And if there's any of the older children who, who could come and help us with that and kind of manage that a little we'll bit. We'll get you volunteer hours. That's right. Volunteer hours for school. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. So we, uh, we really appreciate the volunteers that we have. Between, between our shopping days, we are receiving donated clothing, and we go through sort all the clothing. So we have many days where I stand up here and say, it's sorting day tomorrow. And uh, we are very... Uh, I should say, we're very particular. If the clothes come through, they have any bit of stain, if they have any bit of tearing on the clothes or any damage whatsoever, we, uh, we don't put those out for the folks. So they have to be in very good condition or new. And uh, we appreciate monetary donations because what yeah. we do is we go out and uh, purchase clothes in the sizes where we're kind of light. Yeah. So. Sometimes Anna and I go off to the Burlington Coat Factory yes, and do right. a gigantic purchase of certain areas and certain sizes and certain 
But um, Anna, that always helps. We never had a girl as a kid, so, so that we means we could buy shopping. some girl clothing, and then there you go. It goes <laughs> to God's closet. So Yeah, the, uh, the program has, uh, we have in the basement of that church, uh, like I said, we have a blessing of a space that we can put this on. We have about 40 conference-sized tables uh, piled high with clothing of different sizes and so a room for the boys and a room for the girls' clothes, and we're very blessed. We have a, a, a pretty robust program. A Sunland Tahong guy. Daryl, you're out here. Where are you back there? Okay, Daryl, <laughs> uh, uh, welcome Darryl. back, man. I know you got to go back to Arkansas, and I know you're having a great time out there. We miss you, but uh, that's it. We, we lost you about three years ago, I think it was, or four years, five years ago. Anyway, but... Um, Man, that church is still going to work, and, uh, but it's more of an evangelistic center now. Yes. Um, yes. And uh, we're going to actually add to that at some point. But when she's talking about volunteers, it's not that hard. I promise you, it's not that hard if you volunteer. It's kind of, it's about three or four hours, but you come and you can get a job that's straightforward, even if you don't know the certain things. But here's the thing. Jesus said it. And we sometimes think that we're different than everyone else. Well, Jesus said this to the disciples. He says, behold, the bounty is rising. The, the wheat is ready. But the workers are few. Let us go pray that the master, father, sends more workers. Let me tell you, my friends. We always are in that, especially as in America, we, it's funny how we, we have everything we need, pretty much, it seems like. That's when we become less willing. And that's a very interesting dichotomy that happens. But maybe you will find more joy from being able to do something, whether monetary or with your hands. Everything is worth it. So, so we need, okay, we need, uh, uh, what are the things, T, T2 and T3 girls, yes, especially, we're, also, yeah, we're, yeah, looking. we're just making sure, yeah. we're just making sure, and mostly like, um, you know, dresses, pants, things like that, but, yeah. but also socks and underwear, I believe. That's right. a big we, deal. We have, uh, in addition to the, the room that has the, the 40 tables, we have another room where we after they leave that room and go outside, you saw the, some outdoor racks in the video. Yeah. We have racks with other items that have been donated, shoes. Yeah. We have uh, qu several racks of shoes that have been donated to us that are also, we won't put them out if they're, not, if they're beat up. You know, We try to make them in good shape. And uh, we do have other, other items. There's uh, baby blankets and just a number of, of other kinds of items, purses, different things that the, the the blessing that you receive when you look into the eyes of these people who are coming in to shop for free for their children. Uh, I've, I have many stories I could tell you, just one brief story, okay. Uh, I, when I was first, first became involved in this program, I had, we were at one of these shopping events and a lady came up to me and it was in August, you know what time of year August is, is right before school, right? She come up to me and my daughter's begging me for clothes for school. I can't afford to buy her one thing. She said, showed me her bag that she had just filled and she says, oh my goodness, you have saved me <laughs> because now I can go home and my, she tears, you know, I can go home and, and my child will have some new clothes for school. And it just, it touches their heart. Yeah. It touches yeah. their heart. So uh, the Lord is working through our program and, and let that be a blessing to you to come and help yes. uh, in, this, in this effort. Also, if there's, uh, we'll need translation too, yeah. uh, you know, and I think you're already hooking up, but like Armenian, um, if anyone knows Farsi, oh, that's that, that, one, that one sometimes, and of course Spanish, we, we've got almost, we got that pretty much covered, but um, anyway, just please contact Susan. Thank you so much. Let's give her, let's give them a hand yeah, the today. Program. Thank you, Susan. So, and that now brings me to, it's, it's enough for the uh, outreach time. That was a long segment, I know, but let's go ahead and put the uh, two QR codes for offering right here. Bang, right here. Living Stones, right here. The red one and the black one, Sunland Tahunga. 
You can do that with your phone with a QR code or, or if you're online on YouTube, you just go down in the description box, same thing with Facebook in this live cast. Those of you who are here, if you wish to give online, there are QR codes down the wall. Uh, you can go to our website and you'll just go to the bulletin and you can give right there or there's a little card right in front of you. And we, at the end, you can put it in the box. We don't do a collection. We drop in the box at the end. We'll remind you at the end. So that's, that's very important. So uh, don't forget, as you give, so you receive. You know, that's how it is. As we give, so we receive in so many ways. And um, so now, finally, finally, what's the next thing? Do I, is it children's story now? Ah, yes. That was a very great segue, wasn't it? I was very organized in that one. Let's go ahead. It looks like Maria Noel and Micah. Let's give them a hand as they come on up, and there'll be children's story directly following. I have the purple mic. Happy Sabbath once again. So it is a lot of your parents here, and you know what it's like when your kids want to praise God, right? You're just like over the moon. And this morning, I told Micah, look, Micah, whenever you're ready to do special music with me, just let me know. I'll, you can play. And he's like, Mommy, I think I'm ready to do it today. So he's going to be accompanying me on the piano as we sing Joyful, Joyful. We're very, very proud of Micah and Caleb. This is a very special church for us. Pastor Aiken and Tia Anna, as the boys call her, um, have been, you know, staples in our lives. And in this church, we dedicated Caleb, our littlest one. And this is the first time Micah is playing for God in public, also in this church. So we consider it such a blessing to be able to be here and praise with you this morning. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, hail thee to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness drive the dark of doubt away giver of immortal gladness fill us with the light of day All right, so uh, good morning, happy Sabbath. So today I'm going to be talking about um, Daniel. I'm pretty sure a lot of you know who Daniel is and his incident in the lion's den. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about how Daniel got stuck in the lion's den. So it all starts back in Babylon, and at the time Daniel was the king's advisor. And so an advisor like back then was like a person that could interpret dreams and visions. And so Daniel, as a lot of you probably know, he interpreted one of the king's dreams. And so the king was very amazed by this. So the king, um, actually, Daniel was his favorite advisor. <clears throat> but, I mean, Daniel, um, the king had a couple of other advisors that were jealous of Daniel because he was so good at being an advisor. So, uh, so the other advisors didn't like Daniel at all. So, um, so what happened was... Um, so Daniel, at the time that he lived in Babylon, uh, they couldn't like pray or do, they couldn't do anything that had to do with other gods. Only the gods of Babylon could be, um, you could pray to them and praise them. But you know, Daniel, he believes in God. And so Daniel, he, what he had to do, he had to like hide in his room and he had to like pray. So 
one day, Daniel was praying by his windowsill, and the advisors happened to be walking by his house, and so they saw him, and then they were like, okay, this is, this is a good opportunity to get rid of Daniel. So they went to the king, and they told him that they caught Daniel praying to this other god. And when the king found out about this, he felt a little bit betrayed, but at the same time, he didn't want to get rid of Daniel because Daniel was a very good advisor. And so what happened was there was a law that if you pray to other gods, you would be sent into the lion's den and you would be, well, eaten by the lions. And so the king sadly had to send Daniel to the lion's den because it was part of the law. And so while Daniel was in there, he, um, he prayed to God that, um, to deliver him from the lions so they wouldn't eat him. And um, thankfully, an angel of the Lord came, and he shut the mouths of the lions so they wouldn't eat him. And so uh, the next day, the king went to go check on Daniel, sadly, and he was crying, I believe. And so after that, to his surprise, he saw Daniel playing with the lions in the den. And so, so out of joy, he pulled out Daniel, and he said, how, how are you still alive? And Daniel told him, well, I prayed to my God, and he sent down an angel, and he shut them out as the lions, and well, here I am. So from, from that moment on, the king was like, okay, you know what? You can keep praying to your God, and we will not bother you. So, yeah, in the end, um, you always have to be faithful no matter what. And even if, if there's something happening, like a very, like an emergency or something like that, just don't panic, and don't be afraid. Just always trust God because God will always deliver you from a lot of things. So yeah, that's my tune story. Thank you. Totally awesome. Is it now prayer time? Am I in the right spot? Or is it music time? It's me. All right. Very good. I don't have my paper with me, so. And too many things on the mind. That's why I get this out. There are many of you who have communicated to me about prayer requests specifically. One of them, Raul, I am so glad. Monicia and Ernesto, I'm glad to be able to pray for Ernesto and Ernesto. Now, um, Monicia, I know you're going through a lot. We're praying for you, okay? And Ernesto, health. Pray for your health and strength. Um, also, Thomas, he had Sabbath school here, but they had to run off because, you know, Tammy, uh, Thomas's wife, Tammy lost her dad, so they're going again to see, they're leaving to, to see, they got to get together. The memorial's coming up very soon, so we pray for them. He also says, please pray for Emil. Emil, you're online with us, and I know it's been a rough quite a few years, but especially the last few months. Man, we love you, Okay. And you, we have people praying for you daily. One of them here is Cosette. Daily, morning and evening, Emil. Okay? Um, we pray for you all the time and stay strong, okay? I know this was a rough week and a half for you. But um, one step at a time, sweet Jesus, man. Um, also, uh, George and Manuelita, especially Manuelita, we pray for you in the hospital. I prayed with George this week. Um, I hope that you're doing much better. I haven't heard word, but... I'll connect with you soon. Perhaps Maria knows. And uh, we just, we pray for you guys, okay? Also, um, Gisela, uh, you guys, I know you're having car trouble, and we just pray for you. We're going to see you soon. And uh, get the things done you got to get done. I'm so glad you guys are a part of our leadership team. And you're going to do children's story next week, right? So, uh, sorry. Uh, she's on for children's story. So, we're just praying for you and Marcos. Marcos, I'm so glad you've had a great fifth anniversary. Also, we pray for Mitchell and Tiffany and their, their new life together. We pray for Jean, right, Robert? Jean, we pray for strength and faith and healing. Also, we pray for Billy's sister, Jebaha, in the hospital right now, and Polly for healing, and Sterwin on, on flights back to the Philippines with Renato and Elsie. We pray for you as well. We also pray for, um, uh, uh, let's see if I can catch it here, Maureen. We pray for Raphael and Nelson, but, but especially for health and healing. 
always. And um, Shirley, we pray for you as well. And I know you're online. We pray for healing for you and strength going through all the things. And, and you said patience and perseverance. You say it's okay to say online. So there it is. And I'm so glad. Uh, we pray for Sonia's mom and dad, especially mom right now. Dad's dealing with cancer. Mom's dealing with heart issues over in the Philippines. We pray for them as well. And Mario and your family. We love you guys so much. And um, are there other prayer requests that perhaps were not mentioned? Raise your hand if you have silent ones. Silent ones. Yeah. Jesus sees, he hears, and he understands. So we're going to pray now together, and we're going to end with the Lord's Prayer. If you're okay with that, you can say it with me. You know our Father. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we come before you not because we are worthy, but because you are worthy. You died so that we might have cleansing from the things we have done that are wrong in our nature, and you are raised again so that we might live a new life in you. Help us, Lord, every day. There are many here that are in need of healing, but also that are praising God, also those that are perhaps many different things, perhaps dealing with relationships or other things. Lord, you hear them and you understand. And now I will have a moment of silence. Please, quietly give your request to Jesus if it was not spoken earlier. Yes, Lord. You hear, you understand, and you care. You're there with us. Not because we are important, but because you believe that we are important. And that's what gives us the weight of gold in your pocket. Lord, thank you so much for loving each one of us, no matter what background, what culture, what color, what language, history we have. For you have made us one in you. Lord, help us to have a new life in you every day. Help us to be more yours every day. And now we will end with a prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Please say it with me if you wish. Our Father, who art in heaven... Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those indebted to us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine, the kingdom, the power and the glory forever, ever, and ever. Amen. Jesus falling in love with Jesus falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever done
was the best thing I've ever done. In his arms I feel protected. In his arms never disconnected. There's no place I'd rather be Falling in love with Jesus Falling in love with Jesus Oh, falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever done was the best thing I've ever done Wow, Sophia. You go, girl. Excellent. Thank you so much. Alex on the piano. All right. It's great having you here always, man. Um, you have your Bibles? Raise them up. You got them here? All right. Let's, let's, uh, you may have them on one of these things, okay? If you do, please keep the Macy's sales away, okay? Let Instagram stay in Instagram land. Let TikTok lick and dance away later. All right, it's time for us to get into the Bible. How you doing, man? All right, excellent, excellent. Let's, um, before we turn in our Bibles, I'd like us to take a look here real quick. Um, we as, uh, and I got asked by Daryl, he said, where's the real Pieta? The big one. I said, I need one of those. If anyone wants to donate the Pieta, <laughs> we'll put it right here. All right, I, I'm there with it. Uh, let me tell you, just a, just a few, a few, just a few weeks ago, we were able to again, again see that beautiful Pieta by Michelangelo. Man, what an amazing masterpiece. Have you noticed how even cloth Meticulous detail. Meticulous detail. I'd like you to throw that, throw that first slide up there. You can put it up in the corner. And, uh, and uh, yeah, Jeff, go ahead and get me more center right now. And then, there we go, details. You know, we as um, modern people are becoming less and less detail-oriented. You know, we... we uh, have you, ever, have you ever worked on a Mercedes? I, I don't know. Many of you would say, uh, no. Okay, I'm one of those guys. I'm one of those pastors. Yes, I don't have much money, so I have to work on a car. And, and a car was given to me that was a Mercedes from sometime in 1980-something. Remember that, Anna? Where is she? Uh, but anyway, uh, the, um, that car was something else. And... Um, so I, there was something that needed to be fixed on the interior. And I unscrew one thing, and no, it doesn't work. And then you unscrew it, and no, it doesn't. You go, and, and there's multiple pieces and parts you're disconnecting, but they don't come out because everything was somehow interconnected. It's like one piece comes out and everything starts to unfold. Have you ever seen that? Apple does that a little bit. I mean, it's gotten less. But back in the days of Steve Jobs especially, it was, there were these little meticulous pieces and they come out. And, and you have to do that. The smaller the item, the more you have to be very complicated and have everything detail-oriented. But as people, we've kind of lost our ability to have details, it seems. Well... 
I'd like you to take a quick look here, and I think, you know, some of you may have seen some of the things. There's the clock. You know, you see the, the, the clock, but you see some things are cycloca. See these gears, and cycloca is over in Bern, Switzerland. My dad, growing up, Bern, Switzerland, was a uh, place where he always would hear the clock, the cycloca, and you wait for it, and, and all of these intricate pieces moving made many, many, many hundreds of years ago. Still operational. Wooden pieces, metal pieces, brass pieces, all these different detailed pieces. Details. You know, we've lost our detail orientation in the modern world because life has gotten easier for us. When we build a house, all it takes is wood and prefabricated stuff. You get bricks. Those bricks are pre-made. They're made to be able to take a certain amount of weight while at the same time be light so they're easy to transport, right? With the holes in the bricks so you can easily move it. And then you fill it with cement later with rebar. But imagine building something like this. Look at that. You see that building up on the rock? These large pieces of stone carved to specification, made from kinds of stone that match the location, but also must match the humidity of the location. Every one of these pieces put together so that you can build a home or a place of worship. And, and interestingly enough, the people that were designing these things actually lived a shorter time than us. Today, we live longer, and yet the amount we get done sometimes, yeah, I mean, we can say online. And, and, and you know, there's, there's the, computer, you know, the computer revolution that happened, which basically turned all of us into computer people, whether you know it or not. Um, it's good. You can get a lot done because of apps that will do things for you. The only problem is, what happens when the app doesn't work and it fails? All of a sudden, and I remember this last week, we were, we were having a website problem, and I'm so happy. Andy, Andy Nakamura, man, you're working it out. He always is like, Pastor, don't get nervous. Don't start deleting things. Don't start changing it. Just let it be, and I'll take care of it. Okay, yes, Andy, I will. Yes, sir. <laughs> he says, no, you do it. You have to do this step and this step. And I was like, well, we can't get donations unless our site is up. Don't worry about it, Pastor. So I'm all printing out things so everybody can go to the e Adventist or the Adventist giving site. When you discover that things can go down quickly, it's not like the ancient world where things stay there long term. So it's almost like the more we go forward, the more we kind of go back. You know, the evolutionary idea is that we were down here, you know, single-celled organisms, and now we're almost at Superman, you know, Uberman, that whole idea of that we're going to surpass. And we're, we don't need, we can get past, there's no such thing as God anyway. We'll just progress. But the problem is, is history goes like this. Yeah, it goes like this, but the Bible sees it as we were up here, we went down, and now we're coming back up. And Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. So tech. Actually, I don't think we're as... We're, one day you'll go to the museum. All right. And you'll see some of my views on that. But we, because of technology we lose our ability to be interested in details. You see this detail. Look at that. Look at that moat there. And the beautiful. This is, by the way, during the Renaissance, right? And uh, actually, that was given birth to by another R word called the Reformation, which started with, you know, there was John White Wycliffe. There was, uh, there was a lot of 
decree. There was Hus, John Hus. It was basically that Catholicism, or the Holy Roman Empire, during the Dark Ages, so to say, was this time of where, where people were being held back and there were a lot of diseases that actually kind of ended the Middle Ages. And then after these great things that happened, and by the way, at the same time where the West was dealing with the issue of the East coming, the Moors, the big battle between Islam and Christianity. Those were back in the 1300s to the 1400s and all the Crusades and all these things. Life and many people had died during this time. And then came the Black Death. And many people started dying off, and that created an extinction event of about one-third of the population. I know some of you are like, what in the world is he talking about this like this for? This is because what happened is when many people passed away, then the ones left had to deal with it. And they had to work really hard. And through that came a thing called the Reformation, is to learn to read, to learn to discover, the Holy Roman Empire had held down during the Dark Ages, knowledge. The Bible was written in a language that people couldn't read, Latin, because in Europe, Latin was a dead language, and it died off in the 400s or 500s. And so, the people began to get the Bible in their own hands. And when they opened the Bible, they started to read things like, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. John 3, 16. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. They go, you mean God loves me? But, but those in charge of the church, they don't love me. They don't care about me. They're in this golden palace. You mean God cares about me? Ah, and then they start reading other things. And I'd like you to turn in your Bible to Colossians. Now, this don't let this trip you up because it's dealing with something else, and we'll get to that. But it proves the point of who we are and what we do. Check this out. It says, I'll start with uh, Colossians chapter 3. Okay? I'll start with chapter 3, verse 15, and I may skip through. Let's... Let's go ahead and do this together. You with me? All right, you're with me in the Bible. So, verse 15, Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, since as members of one body you are called to peace. Be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you all richly as you teach and admonish one another with wisdom. They had heard during the Dark Ages, they had heard that the priest is the one that admonishes. The church tells us what to do, and we just do it. But they start to be able to read the Bible in their own language. First in Proto-English, early English. Then Martin Luther comes along, German. Local people start to read. Then, and of course, it was all illegal. Martin Luther had a, you know, a, had a price on his head for daring to go against the church, which was in Rome. They started to say the Pope, or should I say God, was in Italy. That was what they said before. So if you want God to notice you, send your money to Italy. That was, that was basically how it was. Send it to Rome, go to Rome, and God will forgive your sins. That's in the West. In the East is a whole different thing. With the Greek Orthodox and that tradition was a whole different thing. But it all kind of was the same until people start to really read in their local language what God, the illumination that God gives. You see this text as I'm reading, you hear that God actually cares about you. He cares about you caring about others. You can be a part. You can be involved in details. Details. Because God's eye, well, let me keep reading here. Let's read and let, it, let Paul, the Apostle Paul, tell us what he says. Okay, with gratitude in your hearts. Verse uh, 17, and whatever you do, 
whether word or deed. Do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, now this is a great one here. Here we go. I need to preach to Anna. Wives, submit to your husbands as fitting in the Lord. I know what the ladies go. But remember, also husbands love your wives. Now here, this is very important. What Paul is telling us is that you and I, you and I have a responsibility to each other, but it's not a responsibility to each other, it's to someone else. We're going to get there. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is what pleases the Lord. And Okay, that's, that's where I say, James, good, you, you obey me. James, are you going to obey me back there? But wait, wait, let's read what Paul also says. Fathers, do not embitter your children, for they will become discouraged. Did you hear that? So in other words, I need to do something too. Don't just tell the kids to be good and dad can do anything he wants. Slaves, oh, here we go. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything. Now, this is not American slavery, okay? This is not 1800s. This is, Paul was writing, the Greeks. They had that. So, Paul undercuts the entire system. Let's read how he undercuts the entire system. He says, obey your masters in everything you do it. Do it not when the eye is on you to curry favor, but do it with sincerity in your heart and reverence for the Lord. Ah, who do you serve? Is it the earthly master? Who? Now here we go. Let's keep reading. Whatever you do, work it with all your heart as if working for the Lord, not for human what? What? Not for what? I can't hear you. Human, in other words, am I serving people or am I serving someone else? You know, as a pastor, I also have a master. You know, in my church, I have leaders. In my conference, I have a president. I have region directors. I have union presidents. I have treasurers up there. I have, I have a North American division. Oh, there's a whole plethora of, of uh, evangelical, what is it? What is it? Uh, ecclesiastical authority above my head. But my question is, is who do I really serve? Who do you serve? Your earthly master or? We all have bosses. And the boss's eye is on us, we do a good job, right? But when the boss's eye is not on us, what do we do? Maybe you're fortunate enough to be the boss. But even bosses have to serve somebody, right? How else do you receive money? I understand this because, you know, we're, we're in a situation in this world where we are all interconnected. So we want people to look well on us. But why is it that we do that detail when the person's looking? It's because we want them to think well of us. But does God have a time when he doesn't see us? Are we awake? Did I put everyone to sleep now? No? Is there a time when God doesn't see you? That's scary, actually right? Martin Luther has an entire treaty on that. He has an entire, in one of his sermons, about how angry he was at reading in the Bible. If I go up to the heavens, there you are. If I go down to hell, there you are. He says, there's nothing I can hide from God. He looks at me with the eye, and I fear him. But then I learned that this same God that sees all things died and became like me. He died for my sins in spite of my misgivings and my failures. Do you see that? How 
God watching you at all times now becomes something good instead of fearful. As a child, the thing that always made me fear when mom and dad weren't there and I was busy playing with fire in the garage. <laughs> Figure yeah, I remember once. I uh, actually, I, I'm glad I never burned anything down. Uh, I, uh, and mom, mom knows all about this because she started laughing because she saw me. It was in New Jersey. I, I had gotten some gasoline and I had lit it inside of a thing and I thought it was so cool and I heard mom coming down and I blew it out. Now, if there's gasoline inside of a, a cup and you blow on it, what's going to happen? Singe all the way like this. My eyelashes, which are quite long, were all like little bulbs. And mom saw me and she starts laughing, as always. She starts laughing because I, I look like my haircut was like this. Blah, 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 all the way around. Mom says, you, uh, I think mom said you learned your lesson, but please, no more of that. Um, but not only when mom and dad are looking at you, but even when they're not looking at you. But wait, we're talking about our heavenly father, right? Details. So now I continue. He says, uh, Paul the Apostle Paul says, Work as if working for the Lord, not for human masters. Verse 24, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. In other words, your real master is not on earth. He is in heaven. It is the Lord Christ you are who? Or, what does it say here? Are you with me in the text? This is Colossians chapter 3. It's verse Again, let me, let me see if I get it. 24. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. In other words, when I do my work for my church, I'm not supposed to just serve. I, I want people to be happy. That's great. But in the end, who's my real boss? In the end, who's my father? And where am I going to receive an inheritance even if my money from my pocket, my clothing from my back, and even if my body is taken away from me by evil people in this world, where will I receive an inheritance of a new body? Not from them. Who? I love that. I was uh, at uh, the volleyball game over James plays volleyball, and uh, the last point is always the one where all the kids put their finger up like this. The finger up. And we all know it means, that. come on, one more point. One more point. And you know, all I can think about is, yes, there he is. <laughs> yeah, that's right. One. There he is up there. He's the one that allows that one more point truly. He's the one that is watching. Your heavenly Father is watching. And in fact, even a sparrow falls, it says. Right? Jesus said it, even when a sparrow falls, he sees it. Your heavenly father knows. This was the Reformation message. You see all this beautiful stuff, absolutely beautiful detail that you see throughout all of ancient, well, Renaissance world. Because a culture, even though there were many in the Renaissance who did not care about God, there was a culture behind them of the Reformation there was, God is not in Rome, Italy. God is watching over your shoulder. Your God is watching you because he cares so much about your work because you are his child. Do you understand what I'm saying? Does that make sense? I have James as a son. I have John as a son. John right now is preaching. He might be done preaching already because he preaches a lot shorter than me. And uh, James is in the back there, and he's on that. He was actually on the live stream and the and the the, the soundboard because 
Uh, we had no sound guy today, and so James was sound, live stream, everything. He did a good job, doing a good job back there. And um, I'm proud of him. I'm proud of John when they do a good job. Even if somehow I disagree with this or that, it's still my child. I am so proud that my son, whichever one, is doing an incredible job. I'm proud of Anna. When I see her teaching like mad over there at San Gabriel, when I say like mad, it is, boy, those kids are learning, and she's incredible. This is the thing about being proud of someone that is somehow connected with you. Now, I hope that my heavenly Father, when he sees my work, is he proud of me? Well, there's always room for improvement, right? In our lives. Sometimes we phone it in, you know, phoning it in, right? Sometimes we cut corners. Welcome to the modern world. Because our culture is not embedded in God like it was. Even in Asia, where many other gods were worshipped, God was embedded in the culture. And you could see the details. But now, as God becomes to be pried out of culture, the detail slowly slips, doesn't it? Check, take a look here. Look at these flying buttresses. Amazing stuff. These are, these are Gothic designs even. Uh, they're churches. This one is in Strasbourg. And it, you, you can see that in Notre Dame. You know, these, these unbelievable designs where if you remove one piece of it, the whole thing's going to come down. The entire thing implodes or explodes because the weight is holding things together. It's an amazing Thing, the details that hold these buildings together. You see that design there, how this is created. It's amazing. And I was looking at uh, Deomo, Deomo Art, the, the dome there in Florence. I can't imagine, you know, the designer of Deomo, you know what his name was? Michelangelo. <laughs> the Deomo Arch, or should I say, not Arch, the. The, the dome. That's an incredible thing. Imagine the kinds of weights there were. Look at these things in Switzerland. All these clocks. All these little gears. The details that go into it. All of that came from one thing. Here's a company that um, there's a guy that used to be a pastor. Now he's a psychologist over in Germany. Danny. How you doing, man? Uh, if you're there, Mitchie and Danny. And uh, Danny was showing me one of the doors at his house over in uh, Stuttgart, Germany. This was a couple years ago, maybe about 15 years ago. And, and uh, I noticed that the door, it was weird, the handle, we usually just turn it and we open, right? Well, over in Stuttgart, over in Germany, it actually was a handle like this, and you would turn it up, and I was like, what? what? And then it pulls this way. Wait a minute. Wait, what? It, it angles. You know what I'm talking about, right? And then you push it back in and you turn it like this and it opens this way. So it's got multiple hinges and gears in the door. I'm like, man, that's incredible. And you know what Danny said to me? John, you know why these things are made like this, right? Because in the culture is embedded. It says Germany. In the culture is embedded anciently. Before all the modern age came, in the ancient culture is embedded the idea that as you're making that door, God is watching you. And he is proud when you make something that is so detailed. It matches his creation. And I had never thought of that. I had absolutely never thought of that. That a door that's like this, that pushes out that way, had something to do with that. Here we have a Bible written, or should I say, mechanically printed in the first movable type press in the early 1500s, late 1400s. Johann Gutenberg. 
the first movable type press where you could make mass production of the Bible coming off. And in fact, if you go to the Huntington, you can see one of those Bibles. Incredible. Take a look at the details on this thing. Look at that. You see that? Imagine if our books, are, there are some books that are like that. You can find some children's books that are more like that. And remember, the reason why things are like that in the ancient world is because people, when reading is learning, you're learning how to read, what do you do? You put a picture in there. So to jog the understanding. So when you have the story of Samson, you have some Dore art. So you can see maybe how Samson looked. When you have the story of Jesus or the widow who's giving her two little copper coins, you put a picture and there's a lady that seems like a widow. She's putting two copper coins and in the foreground you see Jesus talking to his disciples. See? Therefore, you're teaching how to read while teaching, while they're reading the Bible. That's what Gutenberg had this grand idea to do. He didn't do it for his masters. He didn't do it for people. He did it for God. I want you to take a look there. It's kind of hard to read. I'll say it. If you're online, you can easily see this. Michelangelo. Di uh, Lod Lodovico. Lodovico. Chico? Is it Chico? Or, 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 anyway, never mind. I'm not good with the C uh, in, in Latin, but, uh, and it's, it's Michelangelo. As we know him, I'll just leave it be. He says the words, God will what? See. And this fits. Look at that Sistine Chapel. We went over there. In fact, we were having a hard time because uh, uh, when we bought tickets to Italy, we based it on John's, J.D.'s, time off from La Sierra Seminary, right? And, uh, of course, the dates when it's available is Holy Week. And we went, oh, no, here we go. We're going to be in Rome on Holy Week. Are you kidding me? Everyone in the jail. It wasn't half bad, though. We only waited three hours in a line to get in. That's all. After driving for four hours in the car, never mind. But the thing is, is we got there, we stood in line, we were able to get in, and finally you go to Capella Sistina, right? And you hear all these people, and there's, there's always, if you've been there, there's always the guy that says, Silencio! <laughs> Silencio! Kind of reminds me of uh, church sometimes. Silencio! Oh, whoa, whoa, okay. Right? Wait, where's my tie? I need to be silencio. I need to be good. I did a reverencia. But, but the thing is, is, is I understand who can be quiet when you see this. It's been there for centuries. Unbelievable. There's another thing he made. This amazing pieta. This guy, this guy is uh, very small, so I'm going to come up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for holding you, Mary, like that. Never mind. <laughs> See that? Look at that amazingness. Now, this is only from Forest Lawn, okay? This is from Forest Lawn, so those of you advertising Forest Lawn. But um, this is nothing compared to the one you see in the Vatican. What amazes me is the skin how the skin is like, you can see it pliable, and yet it's marble. How the material flows, and yet if you touched it, it's hard. You can see this all through the Middle Ages to the, into, the, into this time. These amazing artists, Leonardo da Vinci, even though he was more of an inventor than an artist, but he, he was. Michelangelo was this... This amazing sculptor, he never wanted to paint, but yet then he painted the most amazing thing. You know, this, this, this great controversy between Christ and Satan in the Sistine Chapel. I think it was Pope Julius II or 12th, I'm not sure. He, he, the, the Medici guy. He wanted the 12 apostles up there. 
And Michelangelo said a no-go on the 12 apostles. He started it, and then he totally destroyed it, and then he had a, a warrant for his arrest because he ran away. And finally, he was caught, put in prison, and finally says, I got on the prison wall. He says, I know what I'm going to do. He wasn't doing it for the Pope in Rome. He decided he was doing it for God. And that's where real power comes from, my friends. As we end here, you yourselves can be. You are a tapestry of creativity. You can do amazing things. But if you're trying to please the audience of people, it won't always work. And that's what Hollywood's doing today. We're trying to please people here, this political agenda, these, or, or, or please these people over here, or maybe the fans or what. You can't do it. Where real creativity comes from is when you start rooting into the things that are unseen, when God himself becomes involved. My friends, you can be a creation of God for life in this world. If we would just move right along. All right, there we go. You see that? True happiness comes from what? Let's see what the guy said up here. Investment in what? As working... Now, I don't know if my grammar works, but we're going to find out. As working to the glory of who? Soli Deo Gloria. From him alone comes power to change your life. So now, I know in your life, you, uh, there wasn't a lot of scripture in this one, but it was embedded in the ideas of the Bible all through. But here's the part where I call to you. You've been trying to please people in your life, maybe trying to please your spouse, maybe trying to please your kids, maybe trying to please your parents, maybe trying to please your teacher, maybe trying to please your boss, maybe trying to please... Please, other people on the road when you're driving. You know how that goes, right? I'm sorry, you can never please a Los Angeles driver. It doesn't work. Don't try. But you can please someone else. In your life, do what you do. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it for the God who is your Father in heaven. This isn't a father that uses you or walks away from you. He cares about the details in your life. He cares what you do even when the lights are out and you're away from home. He cares about even the things you do quietly or in public. He looks over your shoulder and when you are able to help God's church, when you're able to make something of your life, doing your best, everything, no matter what you're doing, doing your best for God, being the best student, not for yourself, but for God. Yeah, we got a few adventures in here, right? What are the words? Because Jesus loves me, I will always do my best. That's right. My friends... That's the point. Sometimes we want to shirk it when we disconnect from our real Heavenly Father. But I'm going to call you today. I need you to do your best for Him. Because this world needs details.
Thank you so much. That was beautiful. And thank you so much also, Maria, Noel, and Micah. You guys working it out over here. And I'm re I was reminded, thank you, Raul. Next Sabbath is communion, okay? Next Sabbath is communion. We're doing a Passover communion. We will have bitter herbs here, okay? Uh, so that's next Sabbath, all right? Secondly, if you're doing the foot washing, we're going to do foot washing at about 10.15, till about 10.45. That way, we've got that, and then we head into the service for the bread and the wine. Don't forget that. We'll send out a message. I'll do one of my call-outs, and you guys, I'll pester you with all my, please come, please come. Welcome to Pastor John, right? So, uh, finally, again, the box is in the back for gifting. Uh, if you wish to give to God here or online, either way, but in the back is the box. We put it down in that Joash box to build God's temple. Let's pray together. Jesus, thank you so much for being with us and caring so much. Thank you for loving us and walking with us and help us to become more involved in our church and caring about what we do for God. Lord, help us to be able to see that you are looking over our shoulder. Help us, Lord always, always crave to have you see us do our best and help us to do our best. Lord, also bless the food we're going to have together at Potluck over there in the fellowship hall. Thank you so much for bringing the bounties that we have here and each person that has helped so much to have that happen. Lord, bless and keep each person that's here. Make your face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ also, we say, amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful Sabbath. May the joy that flows from the cross of Calvary infect your life. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Bye-bye.